So you think you're interested in getting your ham radio license, but you're not exactly sure how to get started? Welcome to Take a Bath Productions. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on telling you how to do just that. You might have questions like, what do I study? How do I study? Where do I go take the test? How much does it cost? That's a good one. Stay tuned because I'm going to answer all those questions by the time the end of this video rolls around. Now, getting an amateur radio license these days is fairly easy with the amount of tools available for us to use. Some of these tools are 100% free, so you'll want to take advantage of that. I'll be getting into that here very shortly. Now, there are three classes or tiers of licenses available for us. The technician, the general, and the amateur extra. Or you could just call it extra. I went ahead and got my extra license just a few months after getting my technician. That way I didn't have to worry about it and I got it out of the way. The technician one is the easiest one to pass with 35 questions on the test and only 74% needed to pass this one as well as the other two as well. This one has a little bit over 400 questions in the question pool that you'll want to study and I'll be getting into that here in just a minute. Now the biggest disadvantage to the technician license is, is you're pretty limited to VHF and UHF. Those are higher frequencies and they don't skip across the atmosphere so you're limited to local communication only. The general license is a bit better. It's 35 questions. This one will get you on HF and you can talk around most of the world on that one. Now some people will stay at the general level for their whole ham career and that's okay but you do have to be careful not to uh, venture over the band edges and get into the extra portion. Now this is usually not a problem and you can easily see this by using the band plan chart from the ARRL and you can clearly see where all of the license limitations are for all three tiers, including some older tiers like advanced and novice that have now been done away with but are grandfathered in and are still in use today. And of course the extra license covers the whole HF band. Now this test has 50 questions and it's a bit more technical and more difficult. You'll have to pass each test in succession to get to the next license level. Okay, now obviously this can be done on different days unless you're feeling really lucky. Are you feeling lucky? Ugh, nah, never mind. And think that you can pass all three in one setting. Now believe it or not, this does happen. Now if you found any value in this video, I would appreciate it if you'd click on that like button and also subscribe to this channel below for more content just like this. Okay, so let's talk about these question pools. Now these, in my opinion, are going to be your number one go-to resource for passing this test. You can study all the books and materials that you want, but there's nothing like knowing exactly what's on a test before you take the test. The FCC gives us this information to use, so why not use it to our advantage? This is exactly how I passed my test in 2009 by using nothing but free resources. I'll be talking more about those coming up real soon, both free and paid. Incidentally, I did the same thing for my private pilot ground school written exam and I wound up with a 98%. Now with the question pool, you can study the questions and the answers, but you do need to be a little bit careful with this, however. What they can do is mix up the answers on your actual exam. For example, if you remember such and such a question is answer B when you're studying, they might mix that up and now the answer is D on the exam itself. So it's better to not only know what the answer is, but why is that the answer and you'll have a much better time. Now these question pools are good for only about four years, so if you have any study material already or are planning to buy some, make sure that it's current because they do make changes to these questions. Okay, so let's talk about some of those free resources out there. Now I'm only going to scratch the surface, but one site that I used in 2009 and is still available today is QRZ.com. They'll give you the free practice test that you can use to study. Now what I did was, is I made sure I could pass anything they threw at me with at least an 80% or above to give a safety margin over the required 74% to pass the test. Now QRZ does require you to sign up for a free account, but you don't need a call sign to do so. Now another great free resource for you is the Ham Radio Prep Study app that you can put on your phone. I actually downloaded this recently myself to play around with it and it's great. It's highly rated on both the Apple and Google Play stores and it allows you to go through all three question pools in a nice multiple choice format. 
Okay, there's also some buttons on there that you can find local testing locations for you, as well as some other neat stuff. Now, there are other free resources out there, but I also wanted to mention hamstudy.org. This one allowed me to take the exam without registering. I just continued as a guest, but I do think if you register your email, it'll track your question pools a little bit better so it doesn't give you a lot of repeat questions. So if you want to study a bit deeper, there are some paid options available. There are some books that you can get from Amazon and other places that are for all three levels of the license test by Gordon West. Now these books would be a treasure trove of information for you, especially if you don't have any tech background. In reading some of the reviews, people were very happy with these books and said that passing the test would be a breeze after reading these books. Now these books do average about $30 for each license level, so they're not real cheap, but you can decide if you want to go that route, I'll post a link below. Now, even if you study these books or other books, I still recommend that you take the practice exams, like I mentioned before, to make sure that you're ready for the test. Now, another resource is hamradioprep.com. They do have courses starting at around $35, and the reviews were pretty decent, although some people said they liked hamstudy.org better. Now, there are many other books and courses out there that are available for you to study. I'm only scratching the surface on this just for time's sake. Okay, so now you're ready to take the test and you might be asking, what's next? So the first thing you'll probably want to do is go and register yourself on the CORS or the Commission Registration System website to get your FRN number. Now you'll need to bring this FRN number with you to the exam site. Okay, so here's a quote from the ARRL website under what to bring, and I'll post a link down below. Mandatory, before the exam, Examinees are required by the FCC to submit your FRN with your license application form. New license applicants must create an FCC user account and register their social security number in the FCC Commission Registration System CORS, before att attending exam sessions. Registrants will be assigned an FRN number which will be used in all transactions with the FCC. Now, there is also a $35 registration fee to apply for a new FCC license. This is not to be paid to the examination organization, but directly to the FCC, and you should be able to pay that on the CORE's website. Now, the examiner will probably charge another fee of around $15 or less to actually administer the test. That depends on their policies. Now, of course, if you use all of the free websites or, and sources that I mentioned earlier, in theory, you should be able to do this whole thing for around 50 bucks. Now, there are many different locations that you can take your test at, and they're usually going to be pretty local for you no matter where you are. I'll leave a link below to the ARRL site that shows where these testing locations are as well as their schedules so that you can see which one works best for you. Now, real quick, some of the things that you should bring with you are things like a picture ID, a driver's license. If you don't have a picture ID available, you can bring things like a birth certificate, social security card, even a utility bill. I'll leave a link below where the full list is at. Now, if you're just upgrading your license, you'll need proof of the current license level. You'll need things like number two pencils with erasers. You should bring a pen. You can bring a calculator as long as the memory is erased. Written notes are not allowed, and I would leave your cell phone in the vehicle and don't even bring it in with you. Now, bring the fee for the examiner, obviously. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, bring your FRN number. Okay, well, I hope this video was helpful for you. It's kind of just an overview on how to get your license. I'm sure I didn't cover every detail, but thanks for watching.